Day 232, Coffee with Kenny. Got a great question here from a ground school member. I'm gonna try to do this kind of quick because there's a guy been running a weed eater across the channel. God, is that the most annoying noise in the world. So if I have to take a break and edit, we will if he fires that thing up again. So this is from a ground school member. I am Kenny Keller, creator of Helicopter Land Ground School, by the way. So this is one of our members. He's been a member for about a year, working through his private pilot, and he owns a couple of aircraft. And it's a really long email, so I'm not going to bore you with reading a whole bunch of it. Basically, in essence, he's been training for quite a while. He's getting close to the private. He's had some scheduling problems with that school. Sounds like they got him cleaned up. And my always advice is don't ever be afraid to just go get another flight school if you need to, right, when things get really bad. But anyway, sounds like they got a lot of the problems worked out. So he's getting closer, and now... He's asking my opinion, and he doesn't want to upset anybody, so I'm not going to mention any names because it doesn't matter, but it's a great question. He wants to get an endorsement to fly quite a ways back to his home where he keeps these aircraft versus keeping his aircraft at the flight school and have to drive a long way to do training, which I understand, right? He has his own hangar, big, nice hangar. He wants to have his aircraft at home. I get that. And so he's already frustrated from some of the things to the, in the past, but now they're unwilling to sign him to fly off to site, fly solo back and forth to his location at home. No more than I know from just what I'm reading, I have to say, and I already just gave him a quick email that I was going to do this video today. And I said, you know, I, I understand your frustrations, but you are asking for something that's kind of out of the ordinary. You know, even when you own your own aircraft, we're teaching you as a student. And so when we endorse you to fly solo, we're still responsible for you and we're responsible for you until you up to that day you get your license. So there are so many scenarios on weather, terrain, aircraft maintenance. I mean, so there's no blanket statement here. We are taught as CFIs to be very restrictive and very careful with endorsements because if you don't, um, if you don't really stay on top of it and make sure you give a person more and more um, leeway as they're training, um, a person can go out and do something. And I'm not saying that this gentleman, you know. No offense to him, I'm not saying you're gonna go out and do something stupid. I'm saying that we as instructors are responsible for, responsible for our students. From what I'm reading here, I myself would be very hesitant to give off someone, to give someone a sign off to do repeated flights at this distance. And I know that's gonna be upsetting to him probably, but he wanted my honest opinion and that's my honest answer. And again, without being there, and knowing the other circumstances around the whole situation, that's all I can really say. But I, I'm siding a little bit more with the flight school on this one. Again, because, you know, I'll go back to my CFI training. And I've given the same speech to all the people that I've trained as CFIs over the years. You know, they sit you down to have the talk about your responsibility as a CFI. And they ask you, they say, you know, what do you think of the responsibility? Well, the responsibility is huge. I mean, the responsibility is so huge. Most generally, we're taking someone off the street who's not a pilot and taking them all the way to rated pilot where they can go out, make decisions on their own, make their no-go decision on what they're going to, you know, whether they're going to go or not and what they're going to do during those flights. So, you know, we also learn a CFI thing called supervision, supervision and surveillance. Supervision and surveillance is keeping track of your student from day one until they get their license. Keeping track of what they do. Making sure that you're going through a good course of training and you have, you know, you're getting from point A to point B and hopefully helping you do it in a timely fashion, you know, with the best for your money. So a lot of times things that people ask for, we're hesitant to sign you off to do those things. And it's nothing personal, doesn't mean we dislike you, doesn't mean we don't trust you. It just means we're being careful because that's what we're trained to do. We are trained to keep you on a course of training, limit the amount of things that you do on a solo, 
and do the things that are required, right? When you go through the FAR AIM, there are certain things you have to do with a person pre-solo, and then you have your requirements that you must meet for the private pilot. And there is kind of a systematic order of the way we do that, the way we introduced a couple of, uh, the way we introduce cross-country flights to you and how we go about that. So I'm gonna end it with, I understand the flight school's hesitation, and I think you've done a good job. You're almost there. This guy's 55 years old, so awesome. Took a break a couple times when he got frustrated. The point is you've stuck with it. You're getting close. And I understand that's a hassle to drive to the flight school. I get it. I would just buckle down, figure out the last requirements you need to do, get that check ride done, and then take your aircraft home and enjoy. Um, there is a, there's published safety notices about private owners. And private owners have a higher risk of accidents. And one of the reasons they have a higher risk of accidents is because they can do what they want to do, most generally. So, nothing against private owners. But again, when you're, in a, when you're going to a flight school, you know, they have their rules and regulations and their company policies, and there goes the, uh, there goes the uh, weed eater. So, that's the reason they follow guidelines, right? And it makes complete sense. So, just get that rating finished up and take your aircraft home and, and enjoy. Day 232, make sure you subscribe to the channel. When you subscribe, click that little bell. That way you'll be notified of our daily video. We'll be back tomorrow for day 233. Go down below, check out helicopterground.com for all of our courses, private, commercial, CFI, and instrument. We have monthly and yearly options on those. And then we have a great big professional pilot package where you get all your courses, private, commercial, CFI, and instrument all together in one membership and they don't expire. So it's just a one-time fee. And I'm feeling frisky, gonna throw up my code again today. KK25 off for 25% off that big professional pilot package. And I hear the e weed eater getting closer. So I'm gonna wrap it up. Thanks for tuning in, give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment, comment down below and we'll see you in day 233.